In a previous video, we discussed the burden of proof and how there needs to be sufficient evidence to justify believing a claim. But what counts as sufficient evidence to meet the burden of proof? What would convince me, for example, that some kind of god exists? Well, this gets into the often repeated idea that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. It's a cute little soundbite, but what does the word extraordinary actually mean? Well, a rigorous definition of the word might be something like out of the ordinary or incongruent with our understanding of reality, but I think word choice is less important than the underlying idea. The underlying idea is this. If I told you that I could sniff out cancer like a dog, you'd probably require more evidence to believe that than if I told you I could run a seven-minute mile. Whether we like it or not, this seems to be the most effective way of sorting out claims about reality. The weight of the evidence needed to justify a claim scales with the unusualness, you might say, of that claim. The further a claim deviates from our understanding of how reality works, the more evidence we will need to believe it. And if that claim seems to flatly contradict what we already know about reality, well, it's going to be that much harder to believe it, and it's going to require that much more evidence. I might believe, on testimony alone, that my friend can run a seven-minute mile, assuming he's not some lumbering fat ass, but I won't believe that he can sniff out cancer like a dog just because he said so, and I certainly won't believe that he can fly just by flapping his arms really fast. This is what is meant by extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. It is a tried-and-true method for navigating claims about the world. Unless, of course, you happen to be William Lane Craig. Then the world is a radically different place. It sounds so commonsensical, doesn't it, to say that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence if you were to believe them. That sounds so right. But in fact, I think it's demonstrably false. It is simply not true that highly and highly improbable events require extraordinary evidence in order to believe in them. And probability theorists uh, realize this from the time of Condorcet through John Stuart Mill. And they realized very quickly that if you require that extraordinary events require extraordinary evidence, then we would be prevented from believing many ordinary but highly improbable events that happen all the time. For example, uh, suppose you hear on the evening news an announcement of the pick in last night's lottery. Now that's an enormously improbable event, one chance out of millions perhaps. And yet, uh, you would never need to have extraordinary evidence that was more probable than that in order to um, believe in it rationally. This is one of Craig's trademark word games, and I think he knows full well what is meant by extraordinary claims. In this example, he is conflating the probability of one particular form of an event with the probability of the event in any form. The claim that someone won the lottery, whoever they are, doesn't really deviate from our ordinary experience of the world. In fact, even from a statistical perspective, it's not actually that improbable. Someone wins the lottery all the time, usually someone we don't know. If you read a story in the newspaper that some guy won the lottery, you wouldn't give it a second thought, because that is perfectly consistent with your understanding of reality. It is not an extraordinary claim. Here's another example. If I told you that I found a rock which weighs exactly 1.784 kilograms, is that an extraordinary claim? Well, in a blind statistical sense, you might be able to make that argument. I mean, after all, what are the odds that a particular rock would weigh exactly that amount? But, of course, if you approach it this way, then you could argue that literally everything is extraordinary. I mean, what are the odds that, of all the locations on Earth, you would be sitting exactly where you are right now? I think you can see that this is not what we mean by extraordinary, the way a cancer-sniffing human might be called extraordinary. Based on our understanding of the world around us, a 1.784 kilogram rock is not extraordinary at all. That's a pretty reasonable sounding weight for a rock that a person might find. 
I have to believe that William Lane Craig does understand what is meant by extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, because it really is a simple concept. I mean, just to put it into extremely simple terms, the meaning of this phrase is the difference between asking someone to believe that there is a bird in my backyard, there is a wolf in my backyard, there is a whale in my backyard, there is a dragon in my backyard, and I myself am a dragon right now. This is not some esoteric point of philosophy, this is navigating reality 101. If Craig really thinks that the evidence required to believe a claim does not scale with how much that claim departs from our understanding of reality, then he should have lost all his money to a Nigerian prince a long time ago. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. I think the reason why apologists occasionally struggle with this idea is because many of them already believe in gods and ghosts, often for cultural or emotional reasons, so when someone like me identifies these things as extraordinary, the apologist concludes, quite understandably, that so-called extraordinary claims don't actually require extraordinary evidence. The problem with this is that, if their belief in these things was not originally the result of extraordinary evidence, then they never really had a good reason to believe them in the first place, and their burden of proof has not actually been met. Hence, the atheists call for extraordinary evidence. And if our hypothetical apologist were to turn around and demand extraordinary evidence against God, because the negative claim is extraordinary to them, that would be a simple case of shifting the burden of proof, which is fallacious. But if they think they do have extraordinary evidence of God, well, therein lies the debate, and that's where we should start. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence.